Today I wanted to do an update and a bit of a haul for you guys and some announcements as well. Alright, so I wanted to do a quick update for you guys because there are a lot of things that have happened since the last time I've talked to you. Um, so, yesterday I was able to restock my watercolor sketchbook and my Sirens comic. So I will put a link in the description where you can buy those because I know a lot of you guys have been asking um, where you can get your hands on one. Now that they're back in stock, they should be for a while. You guys can go ahead and um, get your copy if you wanted one. So this is what they look like. Um, this is my watercolor sketchbook. Um, it's a perfect bound book and it's really soft and it's pretty much all of my watercolor drawings that I've done in the last year or so along with a tutorial in the back and some extra stuff. And then this is my Sirens comic. This is my senior project from art school where I created my own comic. I drew, wrote everything. I kind of did a branding project as well with it. So I did some products and a website and everything like that. So um, this is my Sirens comic. You guys can get a hold of that as well. Um, it's been sold out for a long time. So if you want one, you should probably head over there right now. Alright, and some other updates. I changed one of the tiers on my Patreon. So anyone who's pledging $10 or more will be receiving a kind of like a pen pal letter from me along with a brand new postcard. Um, one that I won't be selling or giving out to anyone else. And some extra stuff in the mail once a month. So if you are part of my Patreon and you've pledged $10, um, please make sure that you give me your address because I'm actually writing those right now. Thank you so much to anyone who's pledged for my Patreon. You guys are the reason that I'm able to make so many YouTube videos. I think I'm doing like two a week now. So thank you guys so much. My last update is that my giveaway is ending tonight at midnight. Uh, central time, I guess. So if you were wanting to enter the watercolor palette giveaway, head over to my Instagram and you can see the post a couple of posts ago and it'll tell you what you need to do to enter the giveaway. There's already been a ton of people who entered and I'm so grateful. Thank you guys so much for supporting me. And I wish I could give you all the part of the prize, but I don't have endless money. So uh, thank you so much to everyone who has entered already. All right, and now for the announcement I wanted to make. Inktober is starting tomorrow and I'm going to be participating this month full on. I've participated a few years now, but I was never really um, insistent on actually drawing each day for, 30, for 31 days. So this time I'm actually gonna do it. It's gonna be a big project because I'm also going to be recording each one and posting it here on YouTube. So every day there should be a new video starting tomorrow. It's going to be pretty hard to keep up with this because I'm going to be traveling home uh, in a few, about a week and a half, I think. I'm going to be going back to San Jose for a week to visit my family and for my cousin's wedding. So hopefully I can keep up with recording and drawing every day and editing and posting every day. So that's going to be exciting. <laughs> so at the end of Inktober, I'm going to be putting each drawing up for sale on my shop. So if you want to get your hands on one of my original drawings, there's going to be a lot available at the end of October. Today I also wanted to show you guys my haul for Inktober. I went a little crazy on Amazon and I got a whole bunch of ink and art supplies. So I wanted to show you guys what I got and also the type of ink supplies that I usually use. Just in case any of you are doing Inktober and you're not sure what you should try out. So let's get started. Alright, so first I wanted to show you all of the ink that I've bought because that's obviously the most important thing about Inktober. <laughs> so I got a whole bunch of new ones. Um, first one is this De La Rowney, um Pro Black ink. This one I opened up and I tried it out and this, this jar was filled to the brim. Like, you know when you open a bottle of something and there's like a bubble on top. I thought it was a bubble and it was actually the ink all the way up to the to the edge and when I opened it, I didn't I didn't even move it, but it spilled everywhere and I had to clean it all up. So far this is a really good one that I've tried. Um, 
I do test for you right now, but you guys are gonna see for the next 30 days what all of this looks like. So, so I'm not gonna do any uh, demos right now, but this so far is the blackest one I could find. So we'll see how this one works. Um, I also bought a bottle of this Higgins Eternal Black Ink. This is a pretty cheap and reliable ink brand. Uh, I think they use them a lot for filling fountain pens and stuff like that. So if you want a really good cheap brand, Higgins is always a good one. There's also a smaller one that has a, a dropper tool inside of it. So you probably don't need this much right away. All right, and then I also bought a bottle of Dr. P.H. Martin's Bombay Black India ink here. I've actually hardly ever really tried Dr. P.H. Martin's before, so I'm pretty excited to try this one out some more. I know they're really known for their uh, liquid watercolors, so hopefully this one's pretty good too. And this one also comes with a dropper. All right, and then some of the inks that I already have that I know are really good are De La Rowney uh, Acrylic Artist Ink. I guess it's not really regular ink, this is acrylic paint, but this is a really good ink for beginners as well. I use this all throughout art school. I have two bottles here. I think one I emptied and then I filled with water, so it's like a an ink wash. And I have another one of the same brand in this hot pink color. I think it's called Process Magenta. You can actually get this brand at most art stores. I think I got this one at Hobby Lobby. And then I have another bottle of Dr. P.H. Martin's Bombay White Ink here. I haven't used this one much yet, so uh, I can't really tell you how good it is, but um, I'll try it out during Inktober and we can see. And then another white kind of ink that I have is this comic ink. This is a white, this is like almost like a white paint. It's not really liquidy. It's pretty thick like acrylic. They use it for um, comics and manga. So this is really good for doing highlights or if you mess up, you can clean it up with this. All right. And then I bought a couple of um, empty jars, glass jars like this because of the, this ink that spilled everywhere. I think I want to transfer it to a better jar. And then also I want to make another wash ink here, which is uh, probably going to fill it about halfway with water and then add maybe like five or ten drops of one of these inks to make it uh, like a gray wash that you can use for shading and stuff like that. Um, there are a lot of different ways to use ink. You can use it with just a pen uh, and kind of do line art with it, or you could also use it kind of like watercolor and use washes to do grayer tones and shading and stuff. Um, I have experience doing both of those mostly because of art school. They made us use ink a lot in the beginning illustration classes. So um, hopefully if you guys don't really know how to use it, I can give you some tips as I post some of the videos. All right, and I bought a few comic brushes that I really wanted to try out. I saw some cool artists I don't remember who it was that was using it, but I saw some artists on Instagram that were using these brushes. So um, these are the Kurotake Zig uh, Menso brushes. One of them is Kalinsky hair. So if you look at it, hopefully you can see, it's like a really pointed, long brush. Um, and these two are horse and goat hair, I believe. Um, and this is like a medium and small size, so um, I'll try these out. <laughs> I'm really excited for these. I've mostly seen someone using the Kalinsky one, but hopefully the other two are just as good. I also got this brush pen on Amazon. It's The brand is uh, Sumiro, and it's called the Thin Line brush. I don't know if you guys can see it. Thin Line. Um, I, I've never really heard anything about this brush. I just saw it and it was a few dollars, so I wanted to just, I just added it to my cart. But it actually seems like it's a really good um, tip. So I guess we'll see how the ink is and how the brush holds up throughout the month. All right, and then at Michael's, I bought one of these Speedball pen nib sketching sets here. Um, these are always really fun for, for beginners to use. These are the types of pens where you put the nib in the holder and then you dip it in ink 
and there's a whole bunch of different nibs here. I saw someone online using this specific one, so I wanted to just try out a whole bunch of them. Um, so this is one set that I got. Um, I got this holder here on Amazon. Um, it's just like a wooden holder with a little grip. The brand is Tekikawa, um, and it just has a lid, and this is where you would put the nib. So it's just a really cool handle for, for the nib pens. Um, I bought these two cases of the G nib. I'm not sure exactly what brand it is because they're all in Japanese, but these are a really good nib for that people use to do uh, manga and comics and stuff like that. So I wanted to try these out as well. Um, my experience with pen and ink and pen and nibs and stuff like that are all from my mom. Um, she gave me this set, a speedball set that's really old, and I've been using these pens for a long time now. So if you look in here, there's a whole bunch of nibs here. Some of them are for calligraphy, some are for drawing. Um, I've got some nib holders. Uh, in one of my classes, they had us make our own uh, kind of wooden pen. It was really weird, so. I have that in here. So you can find stuff like this at most art supply stores and they're really, really fun to to use. All right, and the last thing I bought was this giant pad of Fabriano watercolor paper. Um, this is hot press, so it's gonna be really smooth. I don't know if you can see, but it's super smooth and thick. And I've been eyeing this pad for a long time because it's so thick, like there's so much paper in here. So I'm going to end up using most of it for Inktober and um, I wanted to make sure that I got a good quality paper for uh, since I'm going to be selling the originals later. I also got this little pencil case for Inktober just because I thought I'd treat myself. Um, so this brand is, uh, I believe it's Lit Lab or something. I can put the the name in the description because I'm not sure how to pronounce it but it's called the smart fit uh, pen case and it has two pockets this one here is kind of like a it opens like this and I have some of my brush pens in here um, these are good really good for October as well this is the Pentel brush pen here and this is the Pentel aquash pen I believe so this one has a really black ink that can be watered down. So um, say you're inking and you want to put like a gradient, you can just take a wet brush and kind of blend it out. This one is the same type of ink, but it's a little bit watered down. So this is kind of like a dark grayish tone, which is really awesome for, uh, for filling in. I like to use these to fill in large areas of black instead of my Pentel pocket brush pen because the ink is water-based and um, it's less expensive and you can just refill it with water and get a lighter tone. Um, so I really recommend these almost more than the Pentel Pocket Brush Pen actually, for beginners especially. Um, I have this Uniball Signo white gel pen. If you are looking for a white gel pen, this is the kind that you should get. It's amazing. <laughs> And then I just have a black Prismacolor marker with a brush nib. All right, and then in here, a tiny little Muji sharpener and a little Muji eraser as well, the black ones. These ones are my favorite because they don't, they don't streak and they erase really well. So I really, I recommend any type of black eraser, honestly. All right, and then this pocket here opens up. Oh, this pocket here opens up like this. And then here I have, here's my inking pens. So this is a, this is just a ballpoint pen that I like to sketch with. My Pentel pocket brush pen. This is my Kuretake brush pen. Both of those are refillable, so they're they're pretty similar pens. Um, this is a Uniball, uh, what kind of pen is it? Uniball Vision waterproof pen. And this is just like a regular pen. Um, it's good for, for inking too. This is another Pentel, another Pentel pen. I don't use this one as much. And then here is a Copic multi-liner uh, brush pen, which is also refillable. So that's pretty awesome. 
And then here I just have some Micron pens in size 8, 3, and 005. I have a mechanical pencil that is 0.9 lead. I like sketching really thick when I use pencils, so um, 0.9. <laughs> um, here I have, I get a lot of questions about these pencils that I use to sketch before my paintings. So I'm gonna tell you guys again. Um, I use a Prismacolor Verithin red colored pencil in crimson red. I, I use this for all of the sketches of my paintings. I use it in my sketchbook. I love these colored pencils because their very thin line is a lot sim more similar to regular pencils. It's not as waxy as colored pencils. It's a lot harder of a lead. These are not erasable. So um, they're not like the, they're not like the ones that have the eraser on the end. So these ones are not really erasable. You can kind of erase a little bit with the black erasers, but they're not meant to be erasable. So I like using this color because it's a nice reddish brown. It's not too pink, not too orange. It's like the perfect shade. And when I use watercolor or Copic markers over it, it blends in really well with skin tone. So um, I can use this for blush shading. I can use it for... Um, any of the line work and I, I don't even erase it after I'm done. I just, I leave it there and it blends in and it looks, I like how it looks. So um, I have a ton of these because they're kind of hard to find. They're usually out of stock in most art supply stores. So um, this is just a pencil extender. You can buy these in any art store. Um, so I go through these like probably two, two or three a month or so. So yes. For everyone that's asking, Prismacolor, very thin, colored pencil, crimson red. All right, I got this for Inktober. I haven't really used it yet. That's why it's so clean. I think that's about it for my inking supplies. Also, another thing, I dyed my hair teal. It's super faded right now, so it looks like a green. But yeah, I'm waiting to dye it again because I'm gonna be going home in like a week and a half, so I'm just gonna do it right before I leave. But yeah, I did it at home and I used, um, Ion and Jade and I use Manic, Manic Panic. I uh, don't remember the name of the color, but it's like a light teal. Hey, it's Future. He's mad at me right now because I had to take him to the vet yesterday to get his shots, so. And good luck to anyone who's going to be doing Inktober. I know you're going to need it. Alright, thank you guys for watching. Thank you to my patrons for allowing me to make so many videos for you guys. Good luck to anyone who's going to be doing Inktober, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye!